Now I've been thinking about this conversation I had in the first week back of the spring semester of 2023 at UM, uh, a colleague about whether you should take time off between degrees. Like if you should take time off between your bachelor's and your master's and uh, or your master's and doctorate or whatever the scenario is. And I feel like there's a narrative that's out there that's wanting you to push to go straight. I got to just, just get in there, just do it all. You know, bachelor, master, doctorate, whatever. You're just going to knock it all out. Get it all done because you, you definitely want to get it done so that you don't have to worry about having to do it in the future, right? Which And that's something to consider. But I think that there's a more nuance there that needs talking about. Because I think if there's uncertainty like if you're unsure oh this is i'm uh, this isn't what i want to do i don't know maybe it is but i'm not certain i think the time off is really valuable and i feel like we don't talk about that enough you know i'm someone who from undergrad to masters i went straight right i went straight i went uh, undergrad straight to the masters it never at any point in time occurred to me to take a break you know, that that never crossed my mind, not even one time. Now, it was different for me because I was going from performance to master's in composition. I was switching majors. So there was something new and fresh about it that you know, I didn't have. If I was going to do like a tuba master's, I don't know, maybe I would have felt, felt differently. I don't know. But it, it never occurred to me. But when I finished my master's and I, had, I did a, an extra little uh, third year optional third year situation. After that, it was no question of mine. I, I need to get out of academia. I need to stay out of here for a bit. There's no, <laughs> no way I'm coming back, right? Doctorate is just out of the question, right? I intended to apply, but couldn't shake that uncertainty. And so for me, I took six years. It's been six years from when I ended at Boston Conservatory and where I started here at UM. And I don't know, I feel like that doesn't, we don't talk about those sort of things enough. I needed that time off. Um, I needed to, and I didn't do anything fancy, at least especially the first two years I worked as a server. I worked as a server in a, in a bar in Boston. And I learned so many things, you know, so many things about myself, so many things about the world and how to sell and all kinds of stuff. That was really valuable that you just really couldn't, you really just couldn't get had you been in an academic environment, you know? So, I don't know. What do you think? What's the importance of taking time off? I think it's incredibly important. I think if you, something like grad school, you shouldn't do it if you're not 100% in it. Like me getting here to UM, I'm in it. I'm in it now, and I love it. I'm loving every minute of it, you know? But, you know, this is, uh, I, I, I knew that that's what I wanted, but I needed the six years. Six years, that's a long time, right? That's a degree and a half, you know? <laughs> so, but, you know, you, you have to know. And, and I remember I didn't get in the first year. That's another thing that we don't talk about, the, like, applying to a bunch of places and then it's just not working out. Not like... Oh, I got in somewhere, but I didn't get any money, and I, I can't afford it, so I'm not going to go. I mean, like, rejected everywhere. <laughs> I had one school reject me uh, before I even got all my letters of rec in, which, you know, that's cool. That's a good luck. Like, we really don't want you, you know, and that's fine. That's fine. I didn't need to go there. I didn't know where I needed to go, but I didn't need to go there. So, to sum it all up, I think it's, I think if you're indecisive, about something big like that, something big like grad school, I think you should listen to it. I think you should take the time to think about it. Maybe you need to go in a different direction. It's a symptom of something. What it is, I don't know, I can't tell you because I don't know who you are, you're just watching this video, but you're an individual person and your story is different and the things that you want, where you wanna be, where you wanna go are different than anyone else's. What you can give the community is different than anyone else's, right? So I think if you're indecisive about something like that, you've got to take the time 
to listen to it. I think the listening is important and we don't talk about it enough. So yeah. So what I'm trying to get at here, maybe I'm not being clear, is that if you are indecisive, if you are unsure, you should wait and you should consider all the possibilities, right? You know, even the things that might not make sense, right? You know, our teachers, all of them mean well, right? Well, the good ones do anyway, right? But they've gone down a path and it's easier for them to see what's similar to their path than it is to see what's on yours, right? What's possible for you. You might be the only person who can imagine all of the things that you can do. The ones you don't tell people about. <laughs> Right? So, while you're unsure, take the time to explore every option. You know, especially if you're a composer, that's such a loaded term, right? Oh, I'm a composer. Well, that, there's like a thousand different communities that you can serve. You know, there's not really such a thing as being a composer, right? <laughs> not in just like a singular way. You know, you can, you know, it's all about community, right? Serve the choral community, serve the wind ensemble community, serve the education community, you know? Uh, and even inside of media, there's just so much. Or this is a small group of artists around that you connect with, that you care with, care about. You know, there's so many ways, you know, that we can serve. And it also sometimes means that we can pigeonhole ourselves you know oh i'm i'm a composer i'm only good enough to do this sort of thing <laughs> i can only write in this way and you might have unlocked abilities as a conductor you might have unlocked abilities as a uh as a community organizer as a as a, as a venue uh manager as a concert series runner i mean there's all kinds of stuff that you can do and I think it's a it's like a feeling it's a feeling when you're doing something that's right for you it's a feeling right because really what we do it's less about what we do and more about who we get to be right and I think for each of us finding a way to just be who we are and doing that is the most important and that's easier said than done i'm like that's that sounds like it's a fairy tale like, oh i'm just gonna sit around and <laughs> you know do whatever i want whatever i feel that's not necessarily it you still have to show up you still have to do the work there's still suckage but hmm yeah i don't know i think indecisiveness is a uh, a, a great way of wrestling with decisions. I think you're indecisive because part of you feels torn or you can see multiple possibilities. You might not be able to articulate it yet. You might not be able to say it. So, yeah, it's a curious thing. It's a curious thing. Hmm. I think... When it comes to the indecisiveness, there's there's part of it that you have to explore and ask yourself, why is it that I feel the way? And actually really be honest with yourself. So I know for me, straight from undergrad, I was a performance major, went straight to master's, did composition, loved it. It's fantastic. It's great. But when I got out, I was burnout. I needed a break. The academic environment is, you know, it's intense. It's a lot. It wears you out. And I knew I just, I couldn't go straight. Now, part of what happened for me during the time that I was out is I went through a really intense period, and I still struggle with it, I still feel it, of feeling just simply unworthy of, of doing it, of being a composer person. Um, I just never felt like I, uh, you know, really belonged in a way, which is funny because I was so excited for the change, switching from performance to comp, it just, everything felt right. But after being in, in the Masters for a while and getting out, just something something felt weird about it, off, I don't know. And so I went through a time where I felt like I couldn't do it. 
I couldn't, I couldn't do that. Maybe that, that wasn't the thing that I was supposed to do. I needed the, um, I needed to try other things and see, try my hand at it. So I was like, okay, well, I'll try conducting. I'll try, I'll try working hard on conducting. And I really liked conducting. Um, I really, I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot that has influenced me, that's helped me, um, that, you know, you just can't get by not studying it. Um, and I did many things. I got to do festivals. I worked really hard for it. I got to assist. I got to do lots of opera productions. I got to do a ton of stuff as a conductor person. And I remember I was taking a lesson and it was just a click. And conductor, great conductor, good teacher. I was talking about Mahler. We were studying Mahler. He said something to the effect of like, you know, when you become a Mahler conductor, you know, you have to focus on, and I don't remember what he said after that, because in that moment, there was the click. And the click for me was, what am I doing? This is, I'm not supposed to do that. It's fun, it's cool, I, you know, like, I mean, it feels fantastic, but this isn't, this isn't the thing for me. I don't know, it took me years to have that one little moment of like, no, what am I, what am I doing? There's so many other people who are, uh, it, it's not really about that there are people who are better suited for it. It's just that me, Dave, the human person, sort of, <laughs> that's, this is not it. That's not it for me. Just in that moment, it just clicked. And so it's funny, we, we take such, sometimes we have to take a really long time to have such a lucky moment like that, to have a click, you know, an epiphany, whatever you want to call it. And it just hit me that day. I was like, this is not it. And what, after some reflection, what led me to feel, helped me find that, was that I realized that part of what I was feeling was that I didn't feel like I could do the things that I wanted to do. And so instead of reckoning with why, I ran away from it. So I spent all these years running and doing other things, conducting things and whatever. And it was really just a way of avoiding dealing with it. But what it was, was that I didn't feel like I could <laughs> be a composer because being a composer is scary because you can't just like get a job. You can't just get, I, I mean, it'd be great. I mean, I guess there's a couple of lucky people who maybe get to do that, but it's not a standardized thing. You're freelance. You hopefully get a following. You hopefully get things that work out, but there's no like, oh, I'm a composer. I get, you know, $36,000 a year and we're all okay. There's none of that. And that was the thing that really scared me because you have to, you gotta take a chance. <laughs> not that conducting is any easier you have to do it. <laughs> it's got plenty of stuff that's tricky with that too but I don't know and I didn't feel like coming from such an intense new music community that I could do something like be a film composer or media composer or do things that might be looked down upon by more academic composers musicians whatever so it took me a long time to figure that out a long time. And I still struggle with it. I still feel like you can't show up 100%. So that was my, you know, gripe with indecisiveness. It took me a long time. It took me a long time. And even when I applied the first year, nothing. <laughs> nothing. So it comes for everyone at different times. But I think if you're unsure about whether you're going to take this step for grad school or you want to work or whatever... It's totally okay to not go, 100%. It's okay to be like, I'm not sure. I don't know what I want to do. Like that is a totally normal and acceptable thing. And we try and just sweep it under the rug and that sucks. It's not true. <laughs> we all feel it. The question is whether you feel comfortable being able to talk about it out loud with someone that you trust. That's the real difference. So if you're not sure, wait. You might be needing to go in a different direction. You might need that time to just be there with yourself and listen to what you're telling yourself. So, yeah, I hope this is helpful. I don't know. <laughs> it's just one of those things. It's hard to talk about, but might as well start the conversation, you know? <laughs>